Welcome back again everyone. Thanks a lot for coming back. Thanks to all the people who subscribed. I appreciate it. Uh, it makes me want to keep doing the videos knowing that there's some people out there watching. Um, so today I've got a, a few new things. Uh, some projects I'm working on and uh, some stuff I just wanted to kind of uh, show off. There was um, a gentleman on uh, eBay uh, goes by Motrack Models. I'll uh, post a link uh, to his username because uh, I I highly recommend his product. He he sells. Uh, you see here, it's a uh, looks like a bag of uh, well, pencil shavings except silver. Um, and basically, uh, he takes normally he sells um, loads for gondolas, scrap things like that. And I uh, happened to email him. Uh, off the uh, off list on eBay and asked him, well, do you sell the product you use to make the loads uh, separately? And he emailed me back and said, yeah, he'd be happy to. So he sold me uh, two ounces. Uh, I ended up buying four ounces because he was generous enough to make me four ounces uh, for $20, I think. And uh, I plan to use this in the scrapyard, and that's the project I was going to start working on. So, Motrack models on eBay, I highly recommend it. It's um, basically he just say, described his process uh, kind of loosely. Uh, but they are uh, just real metal shavings. It looks like there's some aluminum in there um, in this lane. It's, it's pretty lightweight. Uh, and then he spray paints it and uh, tarnishes it up a little bit. So it looks great in if you use this for making your own loads and gondolas and stuff. I'm hoping that it looks good as a pile of scrap in the yard. Uh, you know, keeping with the frivolous or uh, money conscious. I know you can buy the Walther's resin scrap loads uh, for your scrap yard. And I'll probably end up getting a few of those in the, in the end for some variety. But I thought this would be nice, especially because I have a conveyor, the Walther's conveyor, uh, that, that this will look good loaded up on. Um, and I'm going to even try at some point, seeing if I can make bales of this. Uh, it might not look perfect, but I was thinking maybe I could cut bales out of styrofoam and then glue this onto each side and then just create small bales and maybe being loaded on a loading dock or sitting on pallets or something like that. So future plans there. The other thing I got off eBay this week uh, was uh, a new Wisconsin Central. This is a Walther's 50-foot uh, Gunderson paper box car. Uh, no box. This is how it showed up. Well, in, in a box, but no uh, no box, which is fine. I end up throwing all my boxes out anyway. They just take up space. Uh, but uh, picked this up relatively cheap. I'll add some metal wheel sets to it. This one's got plastic ones, and then it's got McHenry plastic coupler, so I'll throw Katie's on it. But, I think it was like seven or eight dollars for this guy. So glad to have another Wisconsin Central box car in the roster. So uh, we'll switch to the uh, the workbench here, and I'll show you the fencing that I'm working on for the scrapyard. And then uh, after that, we'll go over to the scrapyard. I'll show you the area that I'm thinking of for the scrapyard, and uh, we'll go from there. So again, here is the uh, the powder as he sells it. Uh, or I shouldn't say powder, but uh, just scrap material, and it uh, you know it's just shavings and uh, you know definitely some real metal in here, uh, but uh, most of it's, it feels like wood that he painted and uh, scrap uh, pieces. In fact, there's a little bit of wood in there that I'll have to pick out when I use it for uh, the scrap loads. But again, highly recommend this stuff. So here is the. Uh, Walther's Cornerstone Scrapyard Fencing and uh, it comes in four panel sections and you can trim them as you need and then the uh, it comes with well, basically corrugated siding is, is what this is so I painted this a sand color with my airbrush and then this is an artificial aluminum uh, both poly scale colors so I'll end up uh, gluing these together to create the fencing. I'm not sure of my final fencing um, arrangements, so I'm not gonna, I didn't want to glue these just yet. The, uh, these were, I spray painted or airbrushed on a uh, base coat of uh, gray, then came back with the sand and then the aluminum, and it seems to take a little bit better. And I wasn't too concerned with 
uh, how thorough the paint was and how consistent the paint was, figuring this is going to be a fence, it's going to be out weathered and worn and beaten, uh, so if it didn't look the best, that was fine. In fact, uh, some of these panels you can even see, uh, I don't know if it'll show up in camera, but the, the color isn't very, uh, there's some gray even showing through, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to weather these anyway in the end. Um, I'm not too worried about it. And then there's gates that come with it, so smaller pieces. I'm going to probably have these permanently open uh, by the track, maybe have another one off the back side of it. So you get uh, six panels for doors and six panels to match the six fences, uh, fence pieces. So let's switch over to the layout and we'll show the area that I plan to uh, put this in. Okay, so as you know, uh, this is the area that I just recently finished, uh, well sort of. I'm kind of holding off, I'm, I'm short on trees and uh, I want to put trees in the foreground uh, in front of the tracks, uh, but I didn't want to do that until I had everything ballasted, which it is, it's, it's all completed there, but I would like to get some more rock molds in the, the berms on the close side of the tracks and then eventually put some trees in there. Uh, but I didn't want to do that right away. I need more trees and I wanted to make sure that I had everything in the background finished uh, before I went and put trees in. That way I don't bump them and uh, end up destroying them. So this will be the area that I plan to have the scrapyard. I uh, have a lead coming off this section here and uh, enough to hold probably at least two gondolas within the fencing. I'm thinking the fence will come probably along this area here. Um, let me grab some fencing just to kind of demonstrate. I'll use the corrugated pieces just for visual effects. So probably something along this line. Uh, maybe something here. This is a gatehouse that came with uh, the uh, this set actually. This is both of these are I'm kind of stealing from. Uh, I, I never used them for the Walther's uh, Lumber Company. I actually have the box right here. It's the uh, Mill Brothers Lumber Wholesaler, and I ended up never using this, so I ended up just painting it up and uh, figure I'll it'll be some sort of outbuilding for the scrap yard maybe where they can store their trucks and things like that and then uh, this was the guard shack but I figured this will be good possibly either as a scale house uh, or as a guard shack just for you know trucks coming in and out have the fencing go around this area and as I look at it I'm a little worried that I don't have enough fencing here uh, I might be short but may integrate this hill. Um, I also have some corrugated siding that I can use. Uh, I can also angle maybe one of these pieces such that uh, it fits a little bit better. But uh, maybe this hill will complete the, the fenced-in area in the back. Uh, this is also from Walther's, uh, their scrapyard conveyor. I painted this up and uh, plan to put some of the scrap that I have on the conveyor itself and uh, maybe have it uh, loading a, a gondola or two. Uh, this I'm not sure of where I'm going to position it. I believe a, a normal size gondola will fit under this so I'd still have full use of the siding if it's hanging over the track and uh, it would make sense to to have it obviously dumping into the track itself. My other intention and I'm going to see how this goes. So what I plan to do is with some styrofoam build up some mounds paint those with a gray color and then cover that with the scrap material that I bought creating hopefully a mounded of, of scrap material. Okay so I just got some scrap pieces of styrofoam that I was using as you can see this one was a chunk of scenery at some point. Uh, figure that I, I don't want the hills to be too big uh, you, they're gonna be piled up by a front end loader or a crane uh, if it's a crane, it'll be off the layout. I don't know that I have the room in that scene to make a an actual magnetic crane there. So, uh, got my surf foam rasp. I'm just going to form this up a bit. Actually, probably just start with a steak knife. Not 
thing I like about this is you can kind of just rough the shape and it doesn't really matter how it turns out. Uh, you can come back with the rasp and uh, really form it, give it some edges. And two, you can make it look like uh, the front end loader is coming in and scooping out pieces of the, the pile. So you can have like a flatter edge to it that maybe where he's working. Okay, well that's that's three. I'm gonna start with these, and uh, I'm gonna sh turn this off, turn out the camera, shot back this up to get the stuff out of here. We'll switch over to painting them. Okay, I've got some folk art and apple barrel, just uh, some country gray and some light gray. I figure I'd go with gray for an undercoat since this is uh, some silver material. If it's gray underneath, it probably won't uh, show the, you know, just to get rid of the pink. Uh, it, it's a pile of metal, so I figure the gray will look best. Uh, before I start painting, I think I'm going to grab some paper. Lay down here underneath them. Got to protect that workbench surface. Not really sure why, but we're going to protect it anyway. Okay, normally I think I'd uh, put the paint onto into a cup or something like that. But to be honest, I think I might just put it right directly onto the, uh, the area itself and just brush it in. Not real worried about how it looks. Just using my standard one inch brush again. I like the one inch brush and a, a nice soft bristle it helps get in into the uh, nooks and crannies of the styrofoam once you've roughed it up. Alright, well, now we've got a, well, maybe a melted elephant. I'm not really sure what that is, but. Why don't we go ahead and try some of this, or just sprinkle it on. I figure I'm going to sprinkle it on over the paint. The paint will provide some adhesive. If it doesn't stick real well, then I can always come back and, and glue it on. But that's what I have the, uh, the paper down for, too. I see he worked in the pieces of wood just as scrap. Interesting. Kind of more interested in the metal, so I'm going to flick those out of there and I can pick them off later too. I think I'll roll this around a little bit just to get it to stick a little. Yeah, I think uh, the paint is definitely providing some adhesion, um, however, I will come back later and like he said uh, put some more on maybe spray some matte medium on once this is dried and uh, get a another coat that's uh, th that works but I think I'd like it to be a little bit thicker and then I think once they're in place uh, I'm seeing that what, what might look nice is to just have a, a base of scrap built up around it to hide the fact that this is a an abrupt hill so, give you an idea how it might look once it's implemented. So, I guess that looks okay. Uh, it was kind of what I expected. Uh, like I said, sprinkle some more on here, let that paint dry, see how it sticks, and then come back, maybe do some more a little later. Okay, since I'm trying this live on air, like I said, never done this before, I did something different with these. I brought out the uh, trusty rusty uh, wood glue and uh, I painted them but then I also put uh, wood glue and you can kind of see it mixed in here. I thought that would give uh, some good adhesive uh, to the paint, make it stick a little bit better. So I'll come back, sprinkle them on, on the uh, scrap metal here. Uh, 
and I'm seeing uh, some advantages and disadvantages already. Uh, the wood chips that I put in here, or that are mixed in here, are definitely going to be harder to get out uh, now that this is glued on. So, uh, back to my <coughs> trusty alcohol and water mixture. I'm just going to spray them down a bit. You know, it'd be kind of interesting if these started to rust. Uh, I also like to save all my Woodland Scenics containers as I use them up just for storage later on. So this is no longer medium ballast, it's now a container of scrap. So you can see for the money I paid this is this is how much I got. Not, not a ton, but it's definitely uh, enough, uh, especially for the project that I've got. The other thing, and I think might follow up with uh, another video on how to make uh, scrap loads. I've done that uh, with coal loads, so I think uh, this could be useful, and this could be useful in making those loads. Okay, so now I've got uh, the water sprayed. Let me get this out of here. That medium bucket. Stir it up a little. All right, well, here's my mounds of uh, scrap. They kind of just look like gray blobs at the moment. <laughs> Uh, hopefully once the glue dries the metal comes out a little bit and we'll fit them on the layout. So now for uh, experiment number two in the scrap yard project we'll uh, see how the dirt uh, floor I guess we'll call it the, the the dirt goes see how that turns out. Alright flipping over to the layout all right, well, through the miracle of editing, and a few days later, uh, the scrap piles are finished. Um, looks like they dried okay. Uh, there's some spots you can see where I think I might go back and uh, update, or update, uh, glue on a little bit more. There's some gray showing through, but it is, uh, maybe once I've got them on the layout themselves, I'll sprinkle on a little bit more. But overall, uh, I, I think they turned out okay. Again, I'll probably have to blend the uh, base of these into the scenery a little bit better. So, these are complete, so that's phase one. Uh, on to the uh, actual layout.